The squeaky wheel gets the grease. It's a saying us car guys know all too well. You fix the most broken in your fleet first, and sometimes that means the most reliable gets neglected. For me, this is compounded because a squeaky wheel doesn't always mean a broken car. It could just be a stock car that's in desperate need of mods. I mean, I can't be driving around my C63 AMG before doing a complete exhaust. My E55 can't just be on stock boost. Of course I had to get the updated bumper for the Tesla, and naturally I have to rebuild the carburetor on my 1985 Firebird in the dead of winter, right? And so because of all my projects, my wife's trusty 2005 Cadillac Escalade ESV is finally squeaking loudly. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. We've owned this truck for five years. It has 167,000 miles, and even though it's very reliable and cheap to maintain, as you can see, it needs a little work. So instead of trading it in on something expensive, and taking on a car payment, I'm going to invest a couple thousand dollars and about eight hours of my time into bringing her back to near perfect mechanical condition at home in my garage. Okay, so we're going to start things off in the interior of the Escalade because I'm going to get pretty nasty as this video progresses. And I want to start by fixing the most important issue, which is the SRS slash airbag light. This just came on a couple of days ago. And wait till you guys see the factory GM bulletin that I found. We're going to be able to fix this issue for free. Free. And as we go along, I'm going to tally up the cost of each repair, but the common theme is going to be how cheap it is to fix one of these second generation Escalades. Let's kick things off with something that probably cost you a couple hundred dollars at least at the Caddy dealer, and we're going to fix it for a big fat zero. So your first step in diagnosing any airbag light is scanning the computer for trouble codes, but you do need a special scanner that will communicate with the SRS control unit. But this is just a cheap Autel I bought off Amazon like three, four years ago, and it works perfectly perfectly for this. So we have B0026, 43, and 44, and take a look at the factory GM service bulletin that I found for this issue. So you guys know that I get a workshop repair manual for every single car that I own. These are only $20 and some of them include bulletins. So you can search for the exact issue you're having. And in some cases, the factory knows about this problem. They issue a bulletin and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix it. So we know that this is our bulletin because we have the 26, 43, and 44 codes right here. Uh, and look at the work instructions to fix this issue. Disconnect and reconnect the IP harness, which is just an SRS connector, three times. And what this does is it cleans the pins and it resolves a resistance issue. And that's it. So no parts are involved and you fixed your SRS light by literally disconnecting and reconnecting a connector that is right here in the kick panel. You just kind of take this piece of plastic out. It's laying right there. And here is the yellow SRS connector. So you unplug this and plug it back in three times and you've just fixed your SRS light for free. Not sure if you guys noticed the Pitman arm puller, but later in the video, we're gonna be replacing a very defective Chinese cheap Pitman arm that I put on a few years back. So I'm looking through the uh, repair manual instructions to see if I can get away with not removing the steering gearbox again. And it does not look like I'm gonna get away with anything. You gotta take that all the way out. But anyway, these manuals are step-by-step, -step, torque specs, pictures, everything's included. They're only about 20 bucks and available for practically any car in existence. Uh, so I'll definitely leave this link down below along with the scanner and along with everything else you guys see in today's video. Even if I forget to mention it, it'll all be in the description box. Okay, so I just re-broke something that I fixed a few weeks ago just to show you guys something that's quite possibly more amazing than fixing the SRS light for free. So listen to the ticking noise when I start this engine. And if you guessed that the ticking noise was a leaking exhaust manifold gasket, I hope you don't know that from experience because in a lot of cases, the exhaust manifold bolts or studs will break off in the cylinder head. And in some cases, you have to remove the entire head. There's drilling involved. It can be very, very expensive and very time consuming. And when I heard this, I was like, oh man, I don't have time to remove the head right now. I got all these other projects, uh, but it was leaking exhaust into the cabin of the car. This is my baby hauler. So I had to get on it right away 
And I found this guy right here. See that little metal bracket there and that shiny newer looking bolt? That right there is a total lifesaver. I know it's hard to see, so I'll put it up here on the screen, but this part bolts to two empty threaded bolt holes on the cylinder head, and then you can thread in a third bolt that literally pushes the exhaust manifold up against the cylinder head, therefore recreating that seal with the exhaust manifold gasket and fixing your leak. So this was about 20 something dollars on Amazon or eBay or something like that. I'll link it down below again. Um, and a complete lifesaver. It is 100% fixed this issue. Uh, and let me demonstrate that to you by retightening that bolt and starting her back up. As you can hear, the ticking noise is totally gone and this engine works perfectly. Now, I couldn't say the same for the automatic transmission about two years ago, it was slipping really badly. And a company called RVS sent me out their transmission treatment. They also sent me their engine protection and restoration treatment. So two years ago, I used both of these products on the Escalade. I figured the transmission was done for anyway, why not try it? And after about 50 miles, it shifted perfectly. Now it's been 25,000 miles and it hasn't skipped a beat. This engine can go eight, 9,000 miles in between oil changes. It doesn't burn any oil at all and it sounds perfect. So these products are anti-friction products. They're metal treatments, not oil treatments. And I told the guys two years ago at RVS, I'm like, this stuff is never making it on the channel until I can test it for literally years. I'm the type of guy that tells people to just follow their owner's manual. I've literally made videos telling you guys that. So I was very, very skeptical, but you can't argue with results. So I hope this stuff will help one of you guys out there. Uh, it's not that expensive and it's only due every 60,000 miles on the engine or the transmission. They have it for the power steering as well. Uh, and I'll be doing it on the CDI. You want to do this right before you have to change your engine oil. You put it in, drive it for a couple hundred miles, then change the oil and you're done. They give you a gel. You mix it with this treatment right here, put it in. They give you instructions. It's really easy. So I might be doing it to the Firebird. That thing was ran with no oil pressure for God knows how long, so it could use as little friction as possible. So I'll leave a coupon code down below, 10% off and free shipping, and I hope this works out as well for you guys as it did for me. All right, we're about to wipe away 167,000 miles of farts. All right, she's out. So I've seen videos online where they take the entire seat out just to remove the lower cushion. I really don't see how that's necessary. This took about 10 minutes to do. Here is our lower seat cushion. We're gonna replace the leather with this right here. Factory OEM style leather. It's gonna match perfectly. New wheels and tires are going on at the end of the episode. Give you a little sneak peek there. <laughs> and uh, here we go. Now we have to remove this leather. Install this one and it's gonna look brand new. Okay, our leather seat bottom is done. So we went from this to this to this. This looks absolutely amazing, guys. And it only took me about 45 minutes, 15 to get the seat cushion out, about a half hour to replace the leather. I did have to use a razor blade, cut a little square here to clear our switches. Uh, and the only special tools you need here are your hands. So this is all held in by Velcro where all the seams are. You just peel it off, put the new one back on. It's very simple. It's almost like GM knew these were all gonna fail and would need to be replaced one day. <laughs> but anyone of you guys can do this at home. 
chrome. Now, it doesn't exactly match the dirty seat back on this car, but this is the exact factory color, so I'll clean this up as best as possible to match. Uh, but on a cheap truck, it's got good bolsters. I'm not going to replace that. I'm not going to spend the money. So $219, and this Escalade is now a much better place to be. So let's lift this thing up in the air and start to get dirty. All right, the Escalade is up in the air. Wheels are off, ready to rock and roll, and we're replacing a bunch of stuff, including these worn out rear shocks. These might be original. They're air shocks. They're leaking, and it rides really rough back here. So those have to go. The last time I did the pads and rotors all the way around was about 35,000 miles ago. So those are low, and we have to replace them. We have a hanging parking brake cable. We're doing a pitman arm up front, and we're replacing these old Cadillac Escalade wheels. These came off of a 2007, I believe. I got them about five years ago. I like the design. I like how they look, but they suffer from a common problem where the chrome starts to peel and then they develop air leaks. And considering that the tires are shot and I need to replace them anyway, I don't think it's a good idea to put new tires on wheels that are gonna leak. Also, the TPC sensors are all bad. And something I really don't like is being a 22 inch wheel, they might look cool, but that doesn't really leave a lot of profile here. The sidewall and the tire is very short, so these ride kind of rough, and I'm not about that anymore. I have kids. I want this thing to ride smooth, so I'm switching it up. I'm going with a 20-inch wheel, a ton more meat on the sidewall. This is a newer design. I really like it. A little bit of a sneak peek for you guys. You got to wait till the end to see them on the truck. Uh, but of course, I got these from OE Wheels, and I've been buying wheels from them for over 12 years. All the sets that I've had on my Turbo Trans Am, two of them are hanging on the wall, are from OE Wheels. The Eco Vet, I put OE C6 replica wheels on that car. Uh, fantastic quality. Here they are again, and what's nice is they have about 50-something thousand wheels in stock, and they use a Hunter Road Force balancing machine, a very good machine. So when you get these in the mail, they are perfect, and they will put the TPC sensors in, so I won't have a warning light in the dash anymore. Their customer service is amazing, and I do my research on wheels, and these meet and exceed SAE and DOT specifications. So for an aftermarket wheel, they are very, very high quality. So I'll definitely leave a link to OE Wheels down below for you guys. So let's get started with these shocks. We have a bolt up top, we have a bolt down below, a couple connectors and they should come right out. Alright, our rear pads and rotors and our rear shocks are complete and looking awesome and I was able to secure that parking brake cable nicely. I just used a couple of zip ties. I actually couldn't find what held that in from the factory and I'm thinking maybe it was something that was made of metal and it rusted away. So comment down below what holds that in from the factory, but it's in good shape now. It's not going anywhere. And speaking of rust, you guys that live in an area that use salt on the roads in the wintertime can feel my pain. I cannot get the caliper bolts off for the life of me. So I've heated this bracket up like crazy. Uh, they will not come out, they're completely frozen. I've been here, I've done this, and basically you gotta replace the caliper bracket. I mean, maybe if you went to town for a really long time with the torch, you can get them to go. But these bolts use a Torx head as well, so you can't really give them too much force. Uh, so anyway, no big deal at all. I really only needed to do the rear pads and rotors. Those were the only ones that were low. And I 
think I might have done these pads maybe a couple years ago. There's no warpage in the rotor, uh, but look at the amount of life. There's no way I did these at the same time as the rears. Uh, there's no way these have 35,000 miles on them, so it's kind of hard to tell, but the inner pad is in pretty good shape as well. So I'll probably just wait till the next oil change. I already bought the brakes. We'll do this uh, for good measure anyway. They're very inexpensive. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. We are gonna attack a Pitman arm next that I replaced 18 months ago with a cheapo from China and it has a ton of play and is totally defective. Do not cheap out on steering parts. Okay, so what you just saw is a bad pitman arm. It goes from the steering linkage to the gearbox and to replace this, we have to drop the entire gearbox down. Not the end of the world. Uh, there are three Massive bolts, one here and a couple there that we have to remove. But first, I like to use the seat belt to lock the steering wheel in a centered position. Uh, then you pop the hood. You're gonna remove an 11 millimeter bolt from the top to disconnect the steering shaft. And then you just have one line that you remove with an 18 millimeter, take that off. If you don't wanna lose all the fluid, just use a little rubber cap at the end of the line. And then you just have a hose, you remove the clamp, pull that up, and then jam a big bolt in it so you don't lose all the fluid from that either. So what we're gonna be doing now uh, is taking this nut off here. Uh, we're gonna take that nut off there and we're gonna get this gearbox all the way out of the truck and on the ground. All right, and here is the new Pitman arm fully installed and everything went really nicely. And here is the old one. This joint is very loose and I did replace this 18 months ago and this is an AC Delco part, but at that time I didn't realize AC Delco had two different lines of steering parts. So this is their economy line and is total garbage. And this, I think they call it their professional series or something along those lines. Uh, so this is about double the cost. It's in the $50 range or so. And this one, it was only about 25 bucks and just a total waste of time. Do not get cheap steering components for your car. Uh, so at that time, 18 months ago, when I replaced the Pitman arm, I also did this bottom seal on the gearbox. It's uh, less than $20. I'll leave a link for that as well. Um, but this was leaking a lot of power steering fluid out and I was able to repair it for very little money without having to replace the entire gearbox. Uh, this is a very involved job. However, you do have to kind of take apart the entire gearbox. But if you're comfortable with that kind of stuff, Stuff, you can save yourself a ton of money by doing that at home. So anyway, I'm gonna get this back in the truck. We're gonna fill it up with power steering fluid, wrap this part of the job all up, and then we're bolting the wheels on and pulling her outside. Key on, parking brake depressed, and check this out. You hear that? Now it is in tire pressure monitor relearn and we can go around and let air out of these tires and wait till the beep and then we're done. Whoa, oh, it worked. <laughs> All right, let's go over here. I gotta do this pretty quick. Sometimes it takes a while. All right, All right so you just go around each one and we shouldn't have a light on the dash after this. Okay, I'm gonna wash this up in a minute and show you guys what it looks like with the wheels, but I just took it out for a ride and it rides so much better than it did before. And check this out, we had been driving around with a tire pressure light 
on forever, three or four years with those sensors not working. And check this out, no more warning message. The airbag is going through its self-check. We're good to go right there. And now I can see our tire pressures. Sweet. All right, guys, I just gave the Escalade the quickest wash in the world. I was actually basically mudding a few weeks back at the auction lot with this car, so it was quite grimy. Uh, but I didn't even dry it. It's gonna be raining in a couple hours. It's probably gonna be snowing tomorrow. It's January in Chicago, and it's 40 degrees out, which is actually really warm. But here she is with the wheels and tires all cleaned up and a much different look than before. I think the 22s are kind of a little bit more elegant. These are the newer model wheels that come on some of the big uh, GM trucks. A little bit more aggressive with the meat on the tires. I like them. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Uh, I already drove it. It rides like a dream now. Uh, and the wheel and tire package, TPC sensors, shipping, taxes, all that kind of stuff was about $1,900, uh, so not bad. I will tally everything up and pop it on the screen right now so you can see what our grand total is. But I think we're gonna be in the high $2,000 range, including the wheels and tires. And now we have an Escalade that's fully sorted mechanically and ready to go. Now I know these trucks aren't worth all that much money anymore, but I don't have a car payment on this truck. It fits our needs perfectly. We don't really need much more. We leave it outside, we let it get beat up, and I am happy about that. And a little interesting story for you you guys that have noticed that the paint doesn't match on this side. Uh, we I paid 8,500 bucks for this truck about five years ago, and four years ago, a deer hit the driver door. My wife was going like 80 miles an hour on the highway. The door basically just jumped right at the door. Its body hit that door. It hit the quarter panel. Insurance gave us uh, $8,000. I found a used door for 75 bucks in diamond white or pearl white or whatever they call this. I put that on myself. I brought it to kind of a shady body shop on the south side of Chicago. They fixed that door. They fixed this quarter. They did a great job with the body work, but they totally messed up on the paint match. So you can see they had masked off that gas cap. So that's the original color. This bottom portion here is the original color, but I only paid $1,200 for the body work. So roughly $1,300 to fix the truck. It's practically a free truck. We let it sit outside. It gets dirty. We take it on trips. The kids beat it up. It needs some cosmetic loving, but I don't care. This thing runs like a top and we really, really enjoy it. And it serves its purpose perfectly. All right, guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments section if you wanna see more videos like this where I'm fixing kind of your normal everyday run-of-the-mill vehicles in the garage showing you guys tips and tricks along the way. Now I do have to get an alignment on the Escalade which I'll probably have to do tomorrow because at this point I gotta leave for work so I'm hopping in the 40 mile per gallon CDI and I am off. So if you like this video hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new and most importantly have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.